Aries app can be found on Google Play and the Apple App Store. It's free for download, and once you have it downloaded, uh, power on your transmitter, then your Aries drone, and finally the Wi-Fi repeater. Um, it's important that all three of those are powered up and active whenever you try and connect to the app for the first time. So once you have it downloaded and all those are powered on and synced and you know that they're all generating uh, the connection the way they should, you go into your Wi-Fi settings and you will see a Wi-Fi network named BBX100 and then a few different numbers. And the numbers, the last three numbers may vary from network to network, but that's the one you're after. The password is going to be capital A Aries and then one, two, three and click join. Take just a moment to join the network, and now I'm connected to the live network with Aries Wi-Fi repeater. I can close out of that and go into my Aries Fly app. And now if I click Connect, it'll take just a moment, and it will sync up to the network. And that alert means that in this drone, I don't have a micro SD card currently, which is correct. I do not have a micro SD card currently in this drone. That alert would go away if you did. So now once in here, I have access to a lot of key features and awesome um, abilities, um, one of which I want to draw your attention to right away. First of all, I'm able to see a live update of the drone visually via the image. So if I just tilt the camera up or down, you can see what we are looking at within the drone. Also, at the top right corner, it tells me my Wi-Fi or connection strength, and it also tells me the battery life on the drone that is in the air, and that's very useful information. Now, also across the top, you have lots of other metadata as a matter like, is, for instance, how long you've rolled on the current take, um, and also like your frame rate and resolutions. So let's look at some of the settings and some of the things you can do. Immediately, you can start and stop recording video. You can do the same with photo. You can also do fast shot photo sequences from within the app. If you go into your settings, you can control quite a few things about the drone. For instance, you can see the network name of it, and then the size and resolution of your images. You may pick them out of this list here. And that includes everything from, you know, 1922 by 1080 at 30 frames per second and on down to 4 by 3 resolutions of 1280 by 960 at uh, varying frame rates and then down to 1280 by 720 at varying frame rates and then finally all the way down to NTSC, which can go up to 120 frames per second. All right, now I'm just going to leave it in 1080p, 30 frames per second. I can go in here and change the view dimensions. This is how wide the camera angle will be. If you've ever shot with an action camera, this is something you're probably rather familiar with. Um, you can change so for the widest angle. It'll be a very wide view of, uh, of the image from the camera. If I go to the medium, it'll be a, a medium view, like a short, a little bit less of a degree view. Narrow is going to be narrowed even more, and small obviously will be the smallest. I'm going to go ahead and change this to the medium view. It'll take just a moment to update. And then now when I come back to my camera, you can see that my view is a little bit tighter. So now let's go back into our settings. And down at the bit rate, and this is one of the things I recommend to do right out of the gate with the drone. Um, sometimes at a high bit rate, if your Wi-Fi signal is not super strong or the network for some reason is lagging a little bit, you might lose, you might see some latency in your video. So the video captured within the drone will be a little earlier. Um, will be the video you see on the display here will have happened already about a second or two before. So if you change this to normal bit rate, the resolution goes down just a little bit, but the real time stays much more in sync. You can come down here and do the same thing for you did for video for stills. You can select sh fast shots and how many images that should take within fast shot most, mode and how much of the sensor you want to access up to 16 megapixels. Now I'm going to change it to 16 megapixels from the default 12. Video content loop. This means that at the end of recording a card, you can start recording over things at the beginning. And uh, that can be useful in many, many uh, aspects. And then you can change things about like the native, um, uh, native resolution for PAL or NTSC, depending on which you know, delivery format you need. Also, there's things like date and time. And you can also format the card. If you have a, a micro SD card within the camera, you can format it and see what versions of firmware you're running and about the drone itself. So it's a very handy little application. Um, 
Again, you can start, stop recording, view live time video, which is really, really useful for taking stills and positioning your images, especially if the drone's far away and you're trying to get a specific um, kind of shot out of it. In the next video, we're going to take a look at your first flight with the Ares X-10.